all right let's uh, continue from here so what prayer is not prayer is not a ritual okay so um, sometimes as we are growing up our parents teach us to pray and they tell us you make sure that you pray every day so it's just part of our timetable whether we mean it or we don't mean it we practice it and uh, therefore it becomes almost like a ritual you know, uh, sometimes we come from backgrounds where uh, before knowing christ that's what we did we used to pray we were very religious and we engaged in prayer you know, uh, in a methodical way or in a systematic way and we continue that but we need to understand that prayer is not a ritual Okay, so God does not want us to have this rhythm where we pray, but we miss out on how we can do it effectively, or in such a way that it produces fruit in our lives. So prayer is not a ritual, and so taking it off today, I prayed. Okay, check. That's not sufficient. That's not how one must pray. Okay, what else is prayer not? Prayer is not an obligation or a religious duty. Sometimes we may think like this: that if I don't pray today, then God will be upset with me because I did not do what I am supposed to do. It's an obligation. but that's not how we must approach prayer it's not a duty that we must fulfill to make god happy so prayer is not a religious duty prayer is also not lip service what does that mean you know lip service means we say something which we don't fully agree with um it could happen you know in many many instances you look at something uh, maybe let's say a child has made a drawing okay and it doesn't look nice but when you're looking at it and they when they ask you is it nice is it great you say yeah it's wonderful but actually you know that the it's nowhere close to what it should look like so you said something just to make them feel happy or you just said something to make them feel nice whereas that's far from what you are actually thinking in your heart right so in the same way when we pray to god saying many things like god you are great you uh, you know you are this you are that but you you are a prayer answering god whereas maybe in our hearts we're thinking actually there's no answer so what what's happening it's just lip service i'm saying something because i'm supposed to say it or uh, maybe even learning some prayers by heart and saying those prayers but not really believing in what we are saying so that also is um, not the way that one should be praying and prayer is not to um force god to do something you know when uh, you have workers unions they want salary hike or you know they want certain benefits what do they tend to do they gather together and then they make a noise and they keep making a noise till the management responds they say no if you don't do this we will not stop protesting sometimes prayer becomes like a protest where we ask god and ask god and ask god till god till you give me i'm not going to stop okay so it's coming from that attitude rather than yeah this is what i'm supposed to pray about and god will give it to me that's not how we are praying but instead we are praying more like pushing god to give us that answer right so it 
prayer is not to um, bring God to the point where we are pushing him to give us what we want. So in other words, twisting God's arm. The more you pray, you can get whatever you want. Prayer is not that. Okay. So these are all the wrong postures or the wrong uh, ways of engaging in prayer. Prayer is also not just an option. You know, sometimes uh, we have many options. We decide that, okay, I'm going to do this plan A, or I'm going to do this plan B. If nothing works, I'll pray. Right? Or it could be the other way around. You know, we say, I'll pray. If it doesn't work, I have plan A, plan B, plan C, and all other plans. So basically, prayer is just an option. Let's try. You, know, you just shoot in the dark, it might go hit. If at all God hears it, and if at all God answers it, there'll be some results. Right? So there's no faith in our praying. It's like a shot in the dark. It's just an option. And of course, you know, when we pray. Sometimes prayer is about proving our spirituality. So how can we prove our spirituality? Um, maybe if we can pray a very long prayer. Sometimes people do that. We pray a long prayer. It just feels like, oh, this person is so spiritual. Look at them. They're able to pray for so long. Or how about the language that we use? You know, if we use... Um, King James Version, Oh Lord, Thou art mighty. You know, you pray like that. Somewhere it kind of reflects uh, a superior spiritual status of, of some sort. So is that how prayer is supposed to be? Where we are able to impress people around us. Maybe quote a scripture or two here and there. And as we are praying, people are going, Wow, look at this person, you know. They know King James Version. They know scriptures by heart. Uh, they're amazing. But is prayer for the people or is prayer for God? At the end of the day, who are we speaking to when we pray? To God, right? So m the mindset is, is not correct. Where our mindset is, we want to impress. When I pray, people should know that, okay, I'm a godly person or, you know, I'm a spiritually strong person. So it's a wrong mindset and we can't pray like that. Um, and certainly when we pray without fully understanding what prayer is about also, uh, we may struggle in seeing results in prayer. So today what we are going to do is we will take time to look at what some of the basic um, you know, understanding should be regarding prayer. And based on that, we will build further and keep seeing how to make prayer more effective. So uh, let's look at seven points which are given in this particular chapter. We'll go over them one by one. And they form the right understanding with which one can pray. So the first one is to understand the nature of God. To have a clear picture about the character of God. For example, if I pray and I say, if my prayer is, uh, God, you know, uh, this person bought a new dress or a new shirt and it looks so good but i'm jealous you know let something happen to to make it uh whatever like let it rain on them right so that's the prayer is it a good prayer or a bad prayer i'm praying to god i have a request i'm asking god but is it a good prayer or a bad prayer bad okay uh, how many of you say it's a bad prayer Less than half of you. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, well, see, the point is I'm from a place of jealousy, envy, 
and also not understanding god's nature god is a good god god is a just god so when i'm asking god lord you harm this person or you hurt that person what i am missing is the understanding of the nature of god where we already know that he's a good god he will never answer a prayer like that right he will only answer it according to his own nature he can't harm or hurt anyone because he is good by nature he cannot give what he does not have so in the same way when i don't understand the virtues or the characteristics of god what god um is all about and you know how he does things i am appealing to god with a wrong request it will never settle with his nature so the first thing for me to understand is who is god can i take this prayer to god based on my understanding of god so what is god's nature like god is love god is truth god is patient god is kind god is gracious god is just god is righteous you know he's full of integrity all of these things give us a picture of who god is and so based on who he is when we go with a need or a request it is effective because it is aligned to his nature so if my request is not aligned to his nature there's no question of waiting for that request to be heard and granted right so this is where some of us may go wrong we don't have an idea of who god is and so our prayers are not being heard our prayers are not being answered maybe we are praying the wrong prayers without understanding the nature of god what how do we you know uh, how how do we recognize the nature of god what do you think what will help us understand how he is okay word of god good sorry okay the works of god yes anything else will help us understand holy spirit yes yes answer prayers okay sure it's similar to the the ways or the works of god right yeah that's true so the more we take time in scripture what's happening is we're getting a an idea of how god does things when we look at how he dealt with israel how he dealt with moses how he dealt with david right it's helping us know him better and better and all the instructions in god's word um it's giving us an idea of what he is made of and you know what he is all about now along with this there are a few things that will quite directly help us know who he is one is the covenant names of god anyone here you've heard of the covenant names of god okay so they are the uh, jehovah names or the the yahweh names of god so we know that god has revealed himself as jehovah rafa jehovah nissi jehovah jire right so these are called as the covenant names of god because covenant is a solemn promise which cannot be broken so when god says i am jehovah rafa it means i promise or uh, it's greater than a promise actually it's a covenant i am committing to you that i am your healer i am the god who heals you so then what is my understanding the nature of god is healer i cannot pray to him to give me a disease if i pray to him and say god put sickness on me or put disease on somebody it will never work because he has revealed himself as the god who heals i am the god your healer 
it's a promise it's a solemn covenant promise right so there are many such promises so when he says i am jehovah jaira it means i have a covenant with you i provide for you always always there's not nothing it will never change if i'm in a need i can immediately say jehovah jaira you're my provider god that's your nature you provide you don't take from me you give to me so i'm going to believe and i'm going to pray into the nature of god right jehovah sitkenu the god of righteousness i can't pray any unjust prayer to him and expect it to be answered if it's a righteous prayer it will be answered so the covenant names of god give us a picture of who god is and how he offers himself to us apart from that you know many of us said the word of god the dealings of god with people instructions of god give us a picture of who he is so our prayers can be in accordance to that and you know the bible says that jesus is the express image of god that means that if any of us want to know how god is and what god would do look at jesus look at the life of jesus right people say oh i have not seen god how does he look like i don't know you know what what would god do i have no idea we don't have to say that because god has already shown himself through jesus so when we study about the life of jesus there are many things that are very evident about the nature of god in the life and the nature of jesus so hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 it says jesus is the express image or you know sometimes we we say right if you take a stamp you all know what a stamp is we put a seal on a letter if you get one seal whatever is on that seal gets stamped on the letter right that is what an express image is what is on the seal is on the paper so jesus in other words is exactly like the father in terms of his nature if i want to know how the father is or the nature of the father is i have to study the life of jesus and that will help me understand the nature of the father and then i pray in accordance to the nature of the father okay so this is very foundational first understand who god is then come to him with our requests then god will hear it and respond to us now just align to the nature of god let's also remember that with god all things are possible so he is a miracle working god we may come to god with impossibilities you know when we take a problem to people people can see the limitations people can see the challenges and they may tell us it won't work out because practically there are many issues but the same challenges when we take it to god do you think god can answer god can work on it absolutely he can because in his nature okay we know that you know god is above uh this finite world that you and i are a part of we are only familiar with the natural but god is supernatural right so his solutions um are literally out of this world to us it may seem like oh i only have um you know five loaves and two fishes what can i do with this but for jesus that's no big deal okay that's what you have come let's multiply how can it be multiplied how did it get multiplied we don't know god is supernatural he does the impossible so 
why are we talking about god doing the impossible because we can pray prayers asking god to do miracles and those prayers are valid right you understand the nature of god and also recognize with god there are no such limitations so man can say no it will not work but i can still take it to god and say god nothing is impossible for you and i'm praying to you i'm asking you god you work in the situation and he always does a miracle right how he works we don't know he's always worked amazing things in people's lives and so that is how we go to god in prayer we know he's a miracle working god the god who does the impossible and so we can ask him in prayer so i'm just uh, looking at our chat here okay um pooja has a question she says sometimes i pray uh, to god god judge god is a judge so please punish corrupt people is that correct or wrong all right so uh, get that where that comes from even the psalmist if you read the psalms he is always he's ranting he's saying god how come those people are doing better how come they are blessed you know here i am seeking you but i'm struggling you punish the wicked you know you punish the wicked we will see that jesus has given us a picture of what we call as redemption okay uh, and that is also there in our lesson today when we pray yes we know that you know some actions deserve uh, punishment but we must still pray for forgiveness and god's redemption that's that's what we see um, you know jesus teaching us so i would suggest puja that if we go through something you just give it back to god and say god you are the better judge i don't want to say anything you do what you you think is right and you just focus on your life don't worry about you know who's getting punished or not yeah does does that help or uh, do you want to say something more please let me know okay of course we can there are prayers uh, in the new testament where one can pray that god give them repentance so there are prayers like that but uh, punish them i don't think we should even get into that so just pray that god touch their hearts help them recognize what they're doing wrong give them repentance that's as far as it goes yeah yes ट करेक्ट 
Yeah, it's not. No, it's the it. No, see, it, it's uh, how do how do I put it? When we are saying correct or wrong, why is it in the Psalms? See, God is very very honest. Okay, He doesn't hide. Like even his own people, like whatever David was going through, it's coming from his pain. It's coming from his frustration, right? Uh, and God doesn't say that, okay, don't express yourself. He doesn't. He allows people to be who they are. So whatever David said, God heard it. It's there in the scripture. What I'm trying to say is uh, there's a better way to pray. God let him do that god let him rant however that's not the the right way that we must hold on to like like we pray they have a scripture, they have a written scripture, and they pray like that. So it is correct or incorrect? Yeah, see, if the heart is, if, if our heart is in it, the prayer works. And we cannot comment on how many people's heart is in it and how many are not. You get it? Some people may be praying with their whole heart. Though it is a written prayer, they are praying with their whole heart. God is the judge to that. We may be, we may be uh, far from, uh, you know, the prayer that some of them are praying. So, so basically, uh, whatever prayer is going on, God sees the heart, right? Exactly. That's that's what we're trying to say. Our heart must be in it. Prayer could be anything. Like we can pray like anything, like uh, sitting and sleeping, doing certain work, and like studying or washing dishes, anything. Yeah. Yeah. But God sees the heart. He yeah. doesn't see that in what situation we are praying, right? Yes, yes, okay. that, that's true. Okay. Uh, but having said that, it doesn't mean that, okay, let's say if, I, if I'm choosing to kneel down and pray or sit and focus in prayer, right? That that's not needed. That's also needed. Now, both are important. That's the, uh, maybe that's the, personal thing I, I say that kneeling down praying huh. and but it's like some people say that okay you have you don't have to pray like doing this doing that you have to respect him you have hmm. to be obedient to him so um, that sentence be yeah. respect him it's not showing that we are not respecting him hmm. it's just we are mumbling our words to to him like thank you god yeah uh, give us strength and thank you for healing. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. We are just praising him. So it's not the wrong prayer, right? Yeah, see, both. it's not wrong. But I'm just trying to uh, help us understand an extreme of either. Now, if we say, no, you cannot pray when you're walking or cooking, uh, that is not correct also. Now, if you say that I'm only going to pray when I'm up and about, I'm never going to make time to sit down with my Bible and pray, that's also not correct. So the extremes of both will not help. We have to have a combination of the two. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Please ask. It, it may help another person if you have a question. Uh, and there's one more thing, like prayer as lip service. Hmm. So when we like. When we grow children into prayer life, we mm. tell them to pray anything. Mm. Okay. So th this is the starting point of them to pray. Yeah. So they do the lip service. Okay. Correct. Oh. And but like if someone is like non believer and came in Christ and he is trying to be to do prayer, but he is doing lip service. And it's like he continued that for approximately two to three years hmm. uh, because he's finding out more and more and more yeah so does that prayer will be listened or not 
See, anything that is lip service simply means that, again, heart is not in it. It's being done for the sake of being done. Like, uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for this beautiful morning. Like, it's just part of what you say, whether you mean it or you don't mean it. You just say it, finish it, gone. Right? Uh, if the heart is not in it, those prayers don't get heard. Please use the mic. Uh, the students need to hear, so yeah. If, if, if prayer is the only one way to talk to God, what are the ways God can talk to us and how to un how do we understand mm. uh, God's answer to our prayers? OK, uh, good. So we said um, prayer is a two-way communication. Prayer is our way to speak to God. How does God speak back to us? Right. So what we've been saying um, regarding the word, the word of God, um, it's full of instructions. And even as we meditate on God's word, there are times when God inspires a scripture to us. Like, right? like we call it the rhema of God or, or God, God's inspired word. It stands out and it speaks to us. And apart from that, uh, we have, of course, the Holy Spirit speaking to us through impressions, through dreams, through visions, and uh, all the other ways in which he communicates. So these are ways that God will speak back to us. Is that okay? Okay. All right. So we'll we'll go further. Uh, we were talking about understanding the nature of God and praying according to that nature. So we said that his covenant names, the ways that he um, works, which are seen in scripture, that reveals his nature to us. Jesus, above all, you know, Jesus is the perfect image. We look at Jesus, the way Jesus works. Uh, served, that helps us understand how God would respond to our prayers. And finally, he's a miracle working God. So we can take our impossible situations to him and see him answer them. Now, the next foundation for prayer is to develop intimacy with God. So when we develop intimacy with God, it becomes easier to pray a prayer which God is in agreement with and um, also to receive God's answers because we become familiar with God's voice. What is intimacy? Okay, intimacy is being very close. Now, uh, again, you know, we all have uh, different kinds of friends. We have just like I don't know what labels we use to describe them, but like general friends or and um, close friends, very close friends, best friend, you know, best friend forever. There are so many titles, right? So what is intimacy? Intimacy is when we have like really, really close friendship. That is what intimacy is. Now, God wants us to have a close relationship with him. How close? Yeah, very close, right? <laughs> no distance at all. <laughs> yeah, so even beyond this, the picture that we get is from John chapter 15. John chapter 15, what does it talk about? Yeah, the true vine. Jesus is the true vine. We are the branches. Where are the branches on the vine? In two, okay? So they are in inside the vine. The branch is connected into the vine. That's close. We are plugged into him. That's our place. And he says, if a branch is cut off, what will happen to the branch? It will dry up. It will be burnt because it dried up. Why did it dry up? Distance. 
or let's use the word disconnect disconnect so dis being disconnected is a serious problem in the christian life i cannot be disconnected and expect to have a walk with the lord how will it work it won't work i'll dry up but because jesus is the true vine i am the branch my position is inside the vine i'm connected into the vine intimacy close how close very close even in the vine that's how close you and i must be and we've been saying that we need a relationship with god you know god is not a person we come to we finish all our duties and uh, finish our responsibilities and say okay god i did my part bye that's not the relationship what is a relationship a relationship is uh, 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 you know where we recognize each other there is uh, friendship there's love there's understanding there are many things in a good healthy relationship so when we are talking about prayer prayer is part of that healthy relationship okay it's not a to do list sometimes that's how children are taught prayer you pray what you want you pray to god you make a list whatever you want give the list to god sounds more like a grocery list you know you give god will give whatever you want there's more to prayer than giving god shopping list <laughs> okay uh, because it's a relationship i have a relationship with god and in that relationship there is prayer in other words talking to god communing with god and we must come to a place where um we are close to him in john chapter 15 verse 7 now the scripture says if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you so if you abide in me that word abide means live live okay we are used to visiting different places but jesus is saying i don't want you to visit like it shouldn't be on and off you come and stay with me at all times you dwell with me so if you dwell with me and my words live in you the word of god where can it live it can live in my heart right so if the word of god is living in my heart and i am living in his presence what does he say he says your prayers will be 100% success 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 whatever you ask it will be done for you do we want success in our prayer we prayed something and it gets done you know we'll talk about jesus later jesus's prayer life was 100% success no failure zero failure how 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 did he have so much success john 15 7 if you abide with me my words abide in you whatever you ask it shall be done for you right so relating closely with the father having an intimate walk with the father me dwelling in his presence his word living in me then i pray and i receive answers to that prayer so we need to develop a close relationship with god and um you know companionship with god and in fact the bible says that god has called us to fellowship with the father with the son and the holy spirit now if take a plant for example okay we tried growing some plants here in the bible college um every time i brought the plants they died okay so i'm anyway that's another story i'm still praying for resurrection for two of the plants they're upstairs okay but why why did they die i was thinking about it why are they not surviving okay particularly um, some of them that we kept here in this hall when we bring them in they'll be like green and lovely looking in about 2 months slowly from the sides you know it becomes brown and dried up and 
eventually uh, they all look so weak like they need to go to hospital right so it is a bad scene for the plants and i was thinking these plants have been designed in such a way that they need certain things in their lives if we don't provide what they need they will not survive so what are some of those things one of course is fresh air okay yeah sunlight water they need all right if we cut off any one of them they will not survive so we were pouring water you know every day every other day water was there sunlight maybe not sufficient over here a lot of fresh air okay reasonable not as much as they want those could be the reasons why they were not surviving that's how they are designed we don't give them what they are designed for they die you know the bible tells us we have been created to fellowship with the father with the son and the holy spirit we live move and have our being with the godhead the father the son and the holy spirit it's a need we have a need if we don't dwell with the godhead slowly a dryness a feeling of disconnect you know some something that that uh, feels like i'm not satisfied or i'm missing something can begin to grow in our hearts very similar to the plants so we are called to fellowship with all of you gone mute uh, pastor so you know that so we read the word and so that's you fellowship with god or fellowship with the sun in, in, in a way so these are not the only way but i'm just uh, helping us understand the holy spirit so when you're praying in the spirit when you're hearing from the holy spirit the fellowship with the holy spirit or we are worshiping these are all needs that we have this is what god has created us for if we miss out on doing these things right eventually we may experience a dryness of some sort but god wants us to fellowship he also wants us to be intimate with him so don't disconnect from fellowshiping with god that's what you and i were created for Think about the life of Jesus. He walked very closely with the Father. He was communing with the Father. In fact, some of the scriptures say that um, day and night he was in prayer. Why was Jesus praying so much? You know, prayer. Anyone's prayer could have been a success. It's the prayer of Jesus. But you see, the life of Jesus. and his relationship with the father was very uh, connected he never lived outside of the relationship with the father and prayer was one of the ways in which he was relating to the father and that's why he strengthened his relationship day and night he prayed anything he wants to do he spending many hours in prayer it's not just about god i want an answer not just about answer it's about relationship it's about close relationship and so that example is there for us communion with the father so we will stop right here we we'll come back and we will proceed we are talking about a relationship with god which is the foundation of our prayer life so we we'll take a break and let's uh, come back at uh, 11 a.m. thank you If online students have questions here, I'll answer it after the break.